Let's talk a little bit about data in machine learning. Um, so right now, uh, machine learning can only take structured data. So if you still remember from uh, IS340, so there are several different type of data resources, structured data, a data in the relational database, assignment structure like MongoDB, and also unstructured like text data. Um, most machine learning models <coughs> require that you convert data into a structured data format. Um, so structure for data format means that everything will be uh, into tables. So we have different columns and also that represent different features of your data. And also we have different rows. So rows represent different entities um, in your data. Um, so that's that's the way that we, we we describe the data in the uh, in database, so in the relational database. However, in machine learning, so we have different name. Um, they are referring to the same thing, but we just give different names. So in machine learning, each entity or each row is called a sample. Okay, so it's called a sample, um, and each column is now we call that feature. So it, each column is called a feature. Uh, so if you remember that one important step in machine learning is called feature engineering or feature extraction. So that simply means that, so when you bring, machine, when you bring data to your machine learning models, you have to choose the most important or most re relevant columns or in machine learning, most relevant features uh, to our machine learning models. So we don't want to bring those unnecessary or unrelated features to our models because that will make the model more complicated. Um, okay, so choosing the right features or even sometimes generate the right features is what we call the feature engineering. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk that one in, in later. Okay, so the step of machine learning. So first, you should have some, or, or you, you should have already you should have some data that are, uh, you know the. Uh, so here we're talking about supervised learning. So for supervised learning, uh, the process is much like you you bring your training data. The training data are the examples of the correct data, so that means you know the right answers. And then you bring the training data to your models and you train the model. Uh, so you fit the data to your model and your model learn the data and also identify the best mathematic um, relationships. And then you can apply the model to the new data. So you can bring the new data to the model and then you can make the predictions. Okay, so those new data are data that the model haven't never seen before. And they are just based on the, the relationship of those existing samples and to predict, to make prediction for the new data. So my question here is that, how confident are you on the model? So if you don't know that, if you, if you are making prediction for the data that you never see, do you have a very high confidence? Well, the, the, the answer will be no. At least for me, I, I will not have, I would not have a very high confidence because I know that uh, the model that is learned from the training data only, so uh, it's not guaranteed that the model will also do, the, do as good on the input data, on the, uh, on the new data. So actually that is a problem that we call it overfitting. So overfitting means that, okay, so here you have those points, those are the training data. And if the model overfit your data, so that means that this red dot, that exactly pass each single sample. Okay, each single sample in your data set. So that met pretty much well to your data. So it is possible that you can have a training model that has 100 accuracy. But what if you bring new data? So like I bring new data here. So will that give you 
the highest accuracy, the best accuracy? No. So in this case, that is an overfitting problem. So that means we produce a model that performs well on the data, but that gener generalizes poor on any new data. And there are several reasons that we we have an overfit data. So for example, the data may learn the noise from the data. The machine may, the model learn, has learned the noise from the data. Okay. Um, and also because uh, you don't have sufficient data, so your, your, your sample is, your data sample is biased, so it does not represent the entire uh, data set. Or probably you, you selected the, the wrong features or wrong columns. So that is the situation we try to avoid. So that is called overfit. And the fit means that your model just doesn't prevail even on the training data. So in this case, if you look at the blue line, okay, so if you look at this blue line, so the blue line is a model that doesn't, is not sensitive to your training data, to the, those blue dots. So no matter how your data varied, uh, the blue line just gave you a flight blue line. So it doesn't care about the data. So that is a uh, end fitting. And if your model is end fit with your data, you need to change a different type model, or you need to bring more samples, or you may need to adjust the uh, features. Uh, so either end fitting or overfitting are not good thing. So, so ideally, you want to find out a balance that not end fit your data and also not um, overfit with your data. So in this case, uh, the green line fit pretty well. Okay, so it captured the general patterns of your training data and. Hopefully, it will also will generate reasonable results on your new input data. Okay, so that's the difference between overfitting and also end fitting. Okay, so the solution for end fitting is pretty simple. You just need to improve your, um, uh, your models, your data, etc. But to overcome the overfitting, the solution for end fitting is simple. Uh, just increase your models in order to sample size, etc., try different features. Uh, for overfitting, uh, the typical approach is that we split the training data into two parts. So we split the data that we know the right answers into two parts. So we use part of data to train the model, and we use part of data to test the model. OK? Um, so you split your, your model that you already have no answers, so part where you train the model, and then we mirror the performance of the model on the testing model, because the model is trained based on the training data only. The model hasn't seen the, the test data yet. So if the model that um, performed good on the training data, but did poorly on the test data, then we are pretty confident that that will be an overfit issue. So then you know that you need to adjust your data. Uh, if your model did pretty well on training data and also pretty well on the test data, in that case, you will be more confident. Say that, okay, in that case, my model will make good predictions for the data that has never seen before. If your model has very poor performance, even on the training data, then that is an end fitting issue. In that case, you just need to try a different type model, uh, bring more sample size, increase your sample size, or try to use different features. Okay, to summarize that, uh, again, this is for supervised learning model only. For unsupervised, you don't need to split your data. For, but for supervised data, so you know all your data that with correct answers, and normally you split, split your data. So uh, you, you split part of your data. So this, those numbers are arbitrary, so you can define your own portions. 
but normally we use 70, around 70% 70 data for training. And we bring those training data into the models. And then we have the model and we apply the model on the test data. Remember that for the test data, the model never seen those test data. And we generate the new predictions and then we have the accuracy. If the accuracy on the test data is also pretty good, then we are confident that okay, this model is pretty good, and then we can apply the model to make predictions for the new data. If the accuracy on the testing data is pretty low, um, but accuracy on the training data is pretty high, now we know that that is an overfitting issue, and we need to either adjust the model parameters or we need to choose different models. Okay, so that is uh, how why we need to split the data in machine learning, uh, especially for the supervised learning.